Story 1. Am I the a-hole for not letting my best friend have her wedding on my property after being uninvited? One of my, 29 male, best friends Carla, 31 female, is getting married soon. It's only meant to be a small backyard type of wedding, but they've been planning it for a few months now, and originally it was supposed to be on my property. They wanted it because it's private, has lots of open space for the reception, a nice view, and the house could be used for them to get ready and stuff. Of course I said yes. She and her fiancé Rick were very happy. Thing is, Carla and I do have a history. We went out on and off in college, but decided to stay friends. Then I met my wife, we got married, Carla met Rick, and now here they are. Now my wife knows I went out with Carla back in college and she didn't care. Carla still went to our wedding and everything. I never knew if Rick was told or not. It's not my relationship, therefore not my business to say anything, so I never did. Rick found out recently, and not in the best way. Not sure how, but from what I heard from friends is that one mutual friend told him, no idea why, we used to date. Not only that, but apparently Carla said a couple years ago she was still in love with me when she was already dating Rick. Don't have actual confirmation if that's exactly what he was told. All Carla's told me is that Rick was told about our past and he's angry at her for never saying anything. It became quite a drama and I didn't hear from her for over a month until now. She told me they're going to couples counseling and that the wedding is still on. But Rick requested that I not attend. It sucks, but I totally get why he wouldn't be comfortable. Then I asked the obvious question. Where are they going to hold the wedding then? To my surprise, she said they still want it at our place. Rick said so too, and in my mind, I'm going, he doesn't want the guy who dated his fiance years ago at the wedding, but still wants the wedding at his house. My wife and I are expected to just not be at our home that weekend. And I told Carla, no, they're going to have to find someplace else since... We're not going to simply leave our home to them for the weekend. Not only for safety reasons, but it just doesn't make sense. Rick doesn't want me around because he's not comfortable, but is comfortable enough to have the wedding at my house? They really want their wedding here, though, and because of that, I've been bugged by not only her, but also Rick and some friends who think I'm being a petty a-hole for not letting them have the wedding here anymore. Honestly, don't think that I am. It just doesn't make sense at all to have to leave our own place for a wedding we're no longer welcome to and leaving our home totally vulnerable. Still, being accused of sabotaging their wedding, Rick believes it's the least I can do after everything. Am I the a-hole? Absolutely not. They. This is the completely very interesting illustration of the phrase having your cake and eating it too they want the place it's not like they rented this place out no money was exchanged they really want to have some sort of rick really wants to have some sort of power over this guy just to be able to say yeah he's not coming to the wedding but we're still using his place maybe he's still angry at this but definitely not the a-hole their relationship, they're the ones that uh, really disseminated the information the way they did, but it's his property. If he's uninvited, he can do with it what he wants. Story 2. Repeatedly block my car in private parking? Good luck finding and getting your car out. Not sure if this is petty or pro, but it was certainly creative and extremely funny at the time, so I'll try here. I live in an apartment building which has end-to-end -end parking for two spaces per apartment, and access to the parking levels, 1 to 5, are done via a locked automatic roller door which people can only get through if they have a remote for it, or sneak through behind someone else. I only have a single car, and sometimes I let my friends park in the space in front of my car if they give me notice, so I generally park at the back of the double space. Plus, it's easier for my neighbors who have two cars. Earlier this year, a random car began parking in front of mine on Friday afternoons, meaning I couldn't go out with my car on Friday nights. Annoying, but not the biggest issue when you live super close to the city. 
This continued nearly every week over about five weeks when I didn't park my car at the front of the bay, which I began doing. But at times I planned to leave the space free for friends coming over or whatever, the car appeared again. I made repeated attempts to stop this behavior by leaving notes, which escalated into leaving printouts of a photo of the car with the license plate clearly visible and an explanation that if it happened again, I'd press charges and or have the vehicle towed. Well, it happened again. And this time, it was still there Saturday afternoon when I had been planning to go away with a group of my mates. My guess is someone went out on Friday, got drunk, and decided to pick up the car later, not concerning themselves with the inconvenience it caused anyone else. It clearly hadn't moved, as my, my aggressive note telling them to take off was still there, limply sitting under the wiper blades. I figured... Enough was enough. It was time to have the vehicle towed, so I called building management and eventually called a towing company, who refused to help because the space was on the third floor and they can't get any trucks up to that level because of the height and space restrictions. Ordinarily, most people would be pretty much boned at this point, and I will admit I briefly considered sitting on the hood of the car until the jerkwad came to pick it up whilst sending my mates on their way without me, but they would have had to work out a new arrangement for transport as one car wouldn't have cut it. Fortunately for me, however, my parents only live 30 minutes away and have a garage where I work on one of my cars that's at the tail end of a minor restoration. One of the things I use pretty often is a set of vehicle positioning jacks to jam my project car right up against the wall of the garage to minimize the space it takes up. For anyone that doesn't know, vehicle positioning jacks are basically devices that slot under each wheel, then lift the car up on hydraulics so you can freewheel it in any direction. Whilst I hadn't originally gone to retrieve them, what I had to take my project car off them, a bright idea came to my head. None of my mates minded spending an extra hour to mess someone over that had interfered with us, so we grabbed the jacks and went back, propped the car up, and wheeled it out. Six guys can easily move around a small hatchback, so we pushed across the level slowly and carefully to an area where there isn't parking, but is a load-supporting pillar with space enough for a car behind it, in a little section of the garage where it isn't lit and is completely out of the way. Typically, there's a guy on my level that parks a motorbike there, but he isn't meant to, and I doubted he minded. We dumped it between the pillar and the wall, and the noise and the nose pointed toward the wall. I took back my angry note, the jacks, and we left to enjoy our weekend. When he came back Monday afternoon after the long weekend, the car was still there, which was no real surprise considering there was only about a foot of space for movement between the pillar and the car, and another foot or so between the car and the wall. From the fact the front wheels had changed, we're guessing they did try to get it out, unsuccessfully. It eventually went later in the week, though I'm not exactly sure how they managed it. I never saw that car again. Too long didn't read? Jerkwad repeatedly blocked my car by illegally parking in my private space, including over a long weekend when I had plans to go away with a group of mates. We used vehicle positioning jacks to move the car and place it between a pillar and a wall, making it extremely hard to get out from a secluded, dark, and out-of-the-way corner of the parking level where most people wouldn't have thought to look. Info edit. For anyone who doesn't understand how parking in my building works, it's like this. Two cars spaces per apartment, but one car goes in front of the other. Hope that clears up why I couldn't just move my car out and leave it where it was. Um, I would say, kind of a little less enthusiastically, not the a-hole. This guy went through all the proper channels, didn't get help, and I'm thinking that these towing companies probably should have had, should have known about these vehicle positioning jacks. They probably could have gotten some extra help, and it was possible to move the car. This guy proved it, and I think he just showed a little bit of dominance here. Yeah, I, I don't think he's the a-hole. 
please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 3 E.D. thinks they rented the whole park. I'm at a city park with my kids. We've been to this park a bunch. There's this one spot where there's a rocky hill, all trees covered. Nice and shady on a hot day. There's a playground and a pavilion at the top of the hill. We get up there, and I immediately notice loud noises and I'm having to step over cables and extension cords. Someone rented the pavilion and set up not one, but three bounce houses around it. Fracking great. So I have to give the disappointing news to my kids that even though they're surrounded by bounce houses, they can't play in them since this is a private party. But they're free to go hit the playground. Everyone is cool. I sit on the bench and my kids go to town on the fake pirate ship when I hear, Hey! That's when E.D., doing his best to imitate the situation from Jersey Shore, walks up to me and informs me that the playground is closed for a private party. I look at him and inform him that the public park does not close for private parties, and it sounds like he rented the pavilion nearby, which is fine, but doesn't give him exclusive use to the neighboring playground. He storms off and returns with a rental agreement and shoves it in my face, telling me to get my fracking kids and leave. Right, so the rental agreement is very clear for the pavilion, all for the grand sum of $35 for four hours. How could any sensible adult think that $35 granted you exclusive use of a public playground? Moreover, why is it so important for you to have exclusive use of a public playground? I again pointed out to him that he rented the pavilion, not the park, and my kids won't go to his bounce houses, and we won't go into his pavilion. But the playground is fair game for everyone. He begins hurling threats and I'm weighing just taking my kids and leaving to avoid this jerkwad. Then, I decide I need to take a stand on principle. So I tell him to frack off and proceed to use my phone to find the phone number for the park office. Our county staffs our parks. During the summer months, they employ park rangers who have peace officer authority. I call the park ranger and tell him that there's trouble at this shady playground and they need to come right away. Sure enough, as soon as I'm getting off the phone, Dolph returns with two of his meathead friends to tell me that they are ejecting me from the park. No, you're not. And if you touch me, I'm calling the cops and pressing charges. No anger, no rage. With this promise of action, however, one of them kind of widens his eyes and steps back, saying to his friend, Just leave them alone, man. This guy, for some reason does not want the police coming, and it's very obvious. The ringleader won't back down, however, and tries to best and tries his best to get in my face, scream and yell. He grabs my arm. I remove my, I remove his hand. All of this just as I see the ranger pull up, yell for everyone to step back from one another and come over. This smug fracker shoves the rental contract into the chest of the ranger telling him that I'm trespassing and he rented this space for the day for his kid's party. Now, normally, I don't like posturing by law enforcement, but here it was pretty amusing. Ranger, touch me again and I'm arresting you. Reed's contract. This is for renting the pavilion. You have the use of the pavilion, but the playground is open for public use. Hands it back. Also, your permit doesn't allow you to set up bounce houses. Where did you plug these in? Ranger follows the extension cords and see that they ran them to the nearby public bathrooms. There was an outdoor outlet. It was locked. This dude cut the lock off so he could plug in his stuff. Ranger comes back with the broken lock. Did you cut this lock? Uh, it was like that when I found it. Really? Because it was intact this morning. So some random person cut this lock and you just so happened upon it within the last two hours? Uh, I guess. Long story short, he let them stay and let them keep the bounce castles because he didn't want to ruin a kid's party. He wrote the guy a citation for the broken lock and the unauthorized power use and banned him from the park for the remainder of the season, after the party. Amazingly, 
the entire event was lost on my children who barely noticed anything was going on, likely because of the compressor noise. Oh, completely, completely not the a-hole. This person was very calm, very cool and collected, was willing to read the contract, and you just got three guys here that are being bullies. I mean, are they so xenophobic or they're trying to protect their kids from other kids that they're just not allowing anybody in? No way. The guy did everything right and very everything calmly and got the guy in trouble for stuff that he knew he wasn't supposed to do anyway. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.